Hi everybody, I'm Gia Roberts and this is Lifestyle of the Believer. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. As you can tell from the title of this video, we're going to be talking about promiscuity. But not promiscuity as in being indiscriminate in your sexual relationships, but also being indiscriminate in what you receive and what you hear and, and, and being indiscriminate in what you allow in and, and what you receive. So that's what we're going to be talking about promiscuity. So I'll begin by saying this. These are the last days. The signs of the time are everywhere. Open your eyes and you'll be able to see that these are the last days. I think every Christian can attest to that according to the word of God and everything that he lets us know that will happen. Um, we're seeing it happen everywhere. So these are the last days. And because these are the last days, anything that you want to believe, you will be able to find somebody that will support you in it. Somebody that will allow you to do it and still be a quote unquote Christian. And that's the sad part. But the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter and the third verse, the Bible says that there will come a time when they will not endure a sound doctrine, but they will heap to themselves teachers after their own lusts having itchy ears. So what does that mean? It means that whatever, because of our, our the lust of our flesh and because of our itchy ears, whatever we want to believe, we will seek it out. We will heap to ourselves. We will seek out whatever we want to believe. And when we find someone that will accept us because of this belief, because we're not enduring sound doctrine now. Not that we don't know it, but we're not enduring sound doctrine. So when we find a group that will accept us or will allow us to do whatever it is that we want to do, we will align ourselves with that so long as it is feeding our flesh and allowing our flesh to be content and be happy. And when that situation no longer uh, allows itself, we'll go somewhere else that will allow our flesh to be happy, having itchy ears and, and believing whatever we want to believe. When I think about it, I think about sometimes, you know, you have, Let's say you decide that you feel like it's okay to go to the clubs every Saturday and then head to church on Sunday morning. And your church doesn't believe it. But there is a friend or somebody that you know that goes to the clubs every weekend, goes to church every Sunday, and they are active and everybody knows it. And so because you hear this and you have itchy ears, your flesh is like, yes. This is, this is what we need. We must align ourselves with this group of people that will allow us to go to the club every Saturday because we still want to go to church. But the Spirit of God will convict you. Every time you go, it's kind of like something is not right. But they said it's okay. So I guess it's okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to shake things up. I'm not going to try to bother anybody. Whatever you want to believe, you will find a group. You will find false doctors and false doctrine, false teachers that will allow you to do whatever you want to do. And not only allow you to do whatever you want to do, but will cancel out what you know is right. So for example, perhaps you, uh, you, you give your tithe and maybe somebody is saying, wait a minute, why are we still giving tithes in 2006? We don't have to do that. And so because of your flesh and because of your itchy ears, you're like, wait a minute. But over here, you guys say, we don't have to give tithe. And all of a sudden, your flesh begins to say, I can go shopping? You're trying to tell me? Because that's like, you know, I can do this and I can do that. And so you align yourselves and you begin to lose out. Because you still have to stand before your God. You still have to stand before him and you still have to answer as to what you did and what you know. Because once you know you are responsible and you are accountable for your actions and your behavior. So being promiscuous, going here and there and receiving whatever somebody tells you because the flesh wants to hear it, you have to be so careful. Perhaps you, 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 you've you grown up and you've been taught all your life that fasting uh, was dedicating yourself to God and showing him how serious you are about him and making that special commitment and and you know, you somebody tells you tell, tell, tells you that you don't have to fast anymore. That's 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 the past. You don't have to do that anymore because you know you don't want to give up your chicken wings, and your coffee, and your French fries. You're like, wait, I kind of think I like this group. I like these people. 
you're being promiscuous with what you know is right. And the worst part about it is, is when you know sound doctrine and you, you're being criticized for it. You're being called a bigot and you're being called someone that's old school because you're standing on the word of God. You stand on the word of God. You stand on what you know and what you believe so that God can get the glory out of your life. Because as I, as I said before, once you once you claim that you are a member of the family of God, somebody's looking at the family and saying, does your behavior line up with what we know and what we come to expect from this family, from what they believe? Because somebody out there will tell you anything outside of doctrine and then turn around and talk about you for doing and, and for falling in. Like the enemy wants to make a clown out of us. The enemy wants to abuse us and use us and, and slap us around and throw us down and, and like I'm done. That's what promiscuity is all about. Like you think about it, you're you're promiscuous. They don't want to connect to you. They don't want to have a, a relationship with you. They don't want to make a commitment to you. They just want to use you. And when they are done, they want to abuse you and they want to throw you to the side and go on to the next person. The enemy doesn't care anything about you. The enemy wants to use you. He wants to abuse you. He wants to hurt you. He wants to ruin your chances of being with your Savior forever. He wants to make you think that, um, you know, that you're, you're, you're worthless because after he's used you, he's going to try to tell you, like, who wants you now? What you going to do? You think? But the truth of the matter is, even if you've been promiscuous in your relationships, in terms of your relationship with Christ, Christ is still saying, look, I, 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 I want you. I, I chose you. I, I've done so many things and I will chase after you. I will come for you as long as it takes, as long as you want to be with me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be chasing after you. I'm not going to give up on you. But we have to be so careful not to be in a place where we are itchy to hear whatever the enemy wants us to hear. I'm telling you, look around you. You speak out on something that you know that is against the word of God, heaven forbid, you're old school, get with the program, get with it, get doing. Be careful. Be careful. I hope you received something from this word today. It wasn't long, and it, um, but I believe that it will minister to somebody. So if you know somebody that can be blessed by this word, I want you to share it. Um, I'm available to speak. Um, if you if you need me to come into your your church and your groups and and speak and minister, please. Um, my contact information is on the bottom. You can visit us on our website. You can um, send us a message. Uh, Lifestyle of the Believer at gmail.com. I just want to be a blessing. I want to remind you that Lifestyle of the Believer exists to motivate, empower, and encourage groups and individuals to see their potential and their purpose in Christ. And that's the life I'm all about. I'm all about the life. And that is the lifestyle of the believer. God bless you. And I'm glad you came. And I can't wait until uh, God gives me something else so that we can meet again. Bye-bye.